Hey, we're at verses 16 to 21 today. There's a conversation underway between King Saul and the prophet Samuel. Saul has asserted that he's done what he was commanded, and Samuel says, no, you haven't. You absolutely haven't. You've totally disregarded God's command. And now Saul has given kind of the excuse, well, the people, blah, 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 the people, instead of me, the king, the people. Now the conversation continues, and it carries on. Verse 16, then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet, and I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, speak on. So Samuel said, When you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? I'm kind of liking Samuel here. He's hearing all these excuses kind of pouring out of Saul's mouth. And what does he say? He more or less says, shut up. He says, you know, be quiet. I, let, let me say something to you. I, I don't need to hear these, these big stories. I don't need to hear that because God spoke directly to me last night. I'm the prophet Samuel. Do you remember? There's a word here in 17. Saul did start out humble. He did start out obeying God. He did start out small, small in his own eyes. But something's gone wrong. Somehow that's changed in a fairly dramatic way. And now he is actually countermanding Saul. Saul, king of Israel, is countermanding God's commands. Saul is going along with the chief, the leaders among the people, and he's doing what they say instead of what God said. I mean, what is this? It's also interesting in verse 19 that, that he says, why did you do this? Why did you swoop down on the spoil? Why did you not obey God's command? Because Saul's story was, well, the people, the people did this. But Samuel comes back and puts the responsibility right where it is. It's on the shoulders of Saul. He says, why did you swoop in? Why did you? So the king is utterly responsible here. Samuel is talking to the responsible party. God made the king responsible, but the king is in the face of unhappy people. He's doing different than God said. There's a warning there for us, isn't there? A warning that we should be very careful that whatever we are supposed to be doing, whatever God has made plain we are to do, that we must do, even if it's uncomfortable, because I don't want to talk directly to this person. I don't want to stand three feet from them or two feet from them and say something that they don't like. Instead, I want to just sort of go along with them. It's kind of this human nature, this fallen human nature. We look, we seek for the things that are the least friction, the least factious between us. And so there's a risk there. There's something. That's why when you talk to somebody, you want to, you want to talk to them face to face. You want to make sure you are looking them in the eye and you're able to hopefully come together. But anyway, here's a case where King is abdicating and he's abdicating his responsibility. Guess what? God's going to remove that from him very completely. Here we have an important lesson for us. Whatever God says, just as Mary told the servants about the wine back in John chapter 2 or wherever it was there, whatever he says to you, do it. So whatever he says to us, let's do it. And let's, let's carry on by praying together. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be on your side, in your plan. Help us to be going in your way, Lord. Saul is setting the wrong example here. All the nations watching, but he is caving in to human feeling. He's caving in to what's socially preferred rather than what the God of heaven and earth has told him in a clear sense to do. So Lord, help us to avoid that weakness that, that perhaps most of us have in our nature, a weakness that wants to go along and get along. Instead, Lord, help us to be bold and, and kind and loving and gentle and generous in every way, and yet absolutely fully bold to follow the command that you give us. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. So may it work this way for all of us, and may you be blessed by obeying the word of the Lord your God. God be with you today in all that you do.